All right, so very welcome back to our channel. And this time you can see on your screen, we have another problem statement uh, related to the CMOS circuit design. So as you can see, we have got two MOSFETs, M1 and M2. And this transistor is acting as an amplifier. There is an external input signal in between this external input and the gate pin of the transistor. You have got this resistor and capacitor in series. In order to use it as a small signal amplifier, you have to provide a DC operating point or DC bias point. So that is being provided through the combination of this resistor RB, which is drawing a current like this from this I reference, and that is connected to the VDE. And this transistor M1, which has its drain pin and the gate pin shorted together, making it operate in the saturation, is going to deliver this current through this resistor RB and setting a voltage at this node and therefore providing a VGS for this transistor right here. So without further delay, let's read out the problem statement and solve for this particular problem. So we read it like this, in the circuit shown below, the transistor M1 and M2 are biased in saturation. So for sure, M1 is biased in saturation because I just said it's been drained and the gate are shorted together, which makes it to operate in the saturation because then the VDS, the voltage across its drain and the source pin is always going to be greater than the voltage across the gate and the source pin of this transistor minus the threshold voltage of this transistor, which is a turn on voltage of this transistor. This combination, this subtraction is also called as overdrive voltage, VOD. So therefore, when this condition is satisfied, you always say that this, uh, this transistor M1 is going to operate in a uh, saturation mode. Now, what about M2 is also said to be biased in the saturation. So here also we assume that the voltage that will come at this node making the VGS here, which is let's say VGS2, and here you have VGS1. So here the VGS2 applied and it has got also its own VTH assuming we have to say that this is an NMOS transistor, the arrow is missing, but we are assuming it is NMOS transistor. And we are taking the output from its drain pin. Here it's its gate pin, and here is its source pin. So here also, uh, this condition is satisfied. It's voltage drop across the drain and the source of this transistor is greater than the VGS minus VTH for this transistor, therefore. Now, their small signal transconductances are GM1 and GM2 respectively. So GM1 is the transconductance of this transistor, GM2 is the transconductance of this transistor, okay? So uh, that's, that's your transconductance basically. Now, uh, neglect the body effect. It means uh, there is a fourth pin for each of this transistor, which is the body or the uh, body or the, let's say the substrate. So in case of M1 and M2, the body is, uh, if it is not tied to the lowest potential into the circuit, both M1 and M2 will exhibit the body effect, which will alter the threshold voltage of this transistors. And therefore, they will have the different IDVD characteristics. And since they are being used in this circuit, they will have the their impact on the overall circuit performance. So we are assuming that the body effect is to be neglected, uh, even if it is there. So we'll not consider a slight modification due to change in the threshold over the overall performance of the circuit. Then we are also asked to neglect the channel length modulation. So channel length modulation indicated by the parameter lambda is defined as basically uh, the, the, the change in the output current, drain current, with respect to the change in the voltage across drain and source of the transistors. 
and we are also asked to neglect the intrinsic device capacitance. So there is this capacitance between drain and gate, between gate and source, between drain and the source for both of these transistors M1 and M2. So we are also neglecting that because to simplify our analysis. So now we say that, assume that the capacitor C1, which is this capacitance, is a short circuit for the AC analysis because we are doing the AC analysis, we have applied an external AC signal as an input. Uh, so capacitor C1 is asked to be considered as a short. And then we have to determine the exact magnitude of the small signal voltage gain, which is the ratio of V out divided by V in. So this is what we have to find. So here is your V out, here is your V in. So clearly this and take a magnitude of the ratio of the V out by V in. So this is basically acting as a voltage amplifier circuit. Okay. So in order to find out the small signal voltage gain, we have to perform the AC analysis of this circuit. And for that, we would like to draw the small signal AC equivalent model. I repeat, small signal AC equivalent model of this circuit. So what we do that, we see that this is basically an amplifying stage right here. So we say that the transistor M2 will have the drain current, which can be represented by this dependent current source, which is having the value equal to GM2 multiplied by VGS2. So that's your value of the current ID2, which will flow through this transistor right over here. Okay. So this is the current and that is flowing from your drain pin to the source pin and source pin is connected to the ground. So right here you have the source pin. Now in order to perform the small signal analysis, we have to short circuit the DC voltage supplies in the circuit. So this VDD will be shorted to the ground. This VDD will also be shorted to the ground. So when this VDD, which is, uh, which is shorted to the ground, then we look at the RD, which is connected between pin drain and the ground. So we can say that here, there is this RD, which is right over here, and it is connected between pin drain and the source. So let me draw it over here. Okay, now there is this output resistance of the transistor which models the short channel effect RO2 right here. So RO2 which is the reciprocal, reciprocal of GDS2 which is the output transconductance of the MOSFET. So there is a difference between the out transconductance at the output and the small signal transconductance. So remember, this is an output transconductance which is derived from the IDVD characteristics of the MOSFET as an output. And this GM1 and GM2 are the small signal transconductors which are, which are derived from the input characteristics of the MOSFET. But now in the problem statement, so this RO2, which is a reciprocal of this one over GDS2, uh, can be also connected between drain and source. But since we are asked to neglect the channel length modulation, so therefore we will say that the transconductance is zero, there is no channel length modulation, and therefore RO is infinite. So it will be represented as an open circuit. So we will draw it here but we can also choose not to draw it here between drain and source. Even if we draw this output transconductance RO2, RD is much, much smaller. RD is much, much smaller than RO2. Therefore, their effective resistance will be equivalent or approximately equal to the value of RD, okay? So that's, that's the case. Similarly, you have this RO1 right over here, which you can draw, but you can also now neglect because the problem statement says to neglect it, okay? So that is the case. Now you have got the, uh, the gate pin of this transistor. So we need to draw this like here. Let's say this is the G2 and this is the D2 and this is the source two of the, of the MOSFET. Then, 
you have got this VGS2 basically. So we will say that this is your VGS2. And from this gate of this transistor, what you see, capacitor is short actually. So, oh, well, you have this resistance, let's say RS, okay? And then you have this external signal, let's say V in, which is connected with respect to ground right over here. And capacitor is shorted here. So from this pin gate two, we will draw that there is this RB. This is the RB right over here. And the effective resistance of the transistor M1, of which is operating always in saturation, can be modeled as a reciprocal of 1 over GM1. So this is the effective resistance of the transistor M1. Okay, so you can uh, draw it like this. So there is this resistance. And as I said, this VDD is also going to be grounded for performing the small signal analysis. So you see that this resistance R, which is 1 over GM1, is connected between the RB and the ground. So here is the RB and then there is this ground. So we'll say that this resistance has a value one over GM1. Okay, so uh, well, uh, and here you have an output voltage, which is right over here. You can see that. So we'll see that this is our output. Now you have got the input. So we are done with our equivalent model. So this is our small uh, signal equivalent model, equivalent model for the circuit shown in the figure. So all set. So is there anything we need to look at or we need to explain at? So obviously uh, there is none. So as I said, the VDD, which is the DC voltage source are shorted while performing the AC analysis right here. Let me draw. And the current source, uh, current uh, sources, uh, the DC current sources, uh, they are open cir circuited, right? So this is as if not there in the circuit, right, actually here. So we'll see that. Okay, so with that, having said that, now we are all set to derive this ex expression, V out divided by V in. Right, so this IG2 is going to flow through, uh, through this register like this, creating the uh, positive voltage drop, uh, but uh, this is the flow of current. So we'll write uh, to have a positive voltage drop, we'll see that this current, which has a value of GM2 into VGS2, uh, is your current multiplied by the resistance, that is the RD, is the output voltage. Now, what is your VGS? VGS2 will be obviously this voltage. So you have got V in applied here and VGS is basically the voltage drop here across this effective resistance of RB plus uh, one over GM1. So we will see that uh, this resistance is RB plus one over GM1 multiplied by the total voltage V in divided by the sum of RB plus one over GM1 plus RS. So just a voltage division rule. Uh, so this resistor, this is an effective resistance right here and this is another resistance. So we just use the voltage division rule to calculate VGS2. Will well, we have we have two. Will we have uh, VGS two in terms of V in? So it is easier to write the expression of V out divided by V in. Okay, because you know the value of VGS two in terms of V in. So we'll uh, first write. Let me write here. So V out is going to be equal to minus. GM2 multiplied by this value right here, RB plus one over GM1 uh, multiplied by V in right here, divided by RB plus one over GM1 plus RS 
okay that's that's the value let me write here and then you have uh, rd so that's the value of that's the value we read so therefore v out divided by v in we are taking this v into the left side and take a magnitude so the negative sign will go away will be gm2 uh here again rb over 1 over gm1 divided by rb plus 1 over gm1 plus rs multiplied by rd and you if you wish you can further simplify and if you know the values of the components such as resistors and uh, the small signal transconductance you can plug in those values into this output expression to get the final gain value okay so this is how we could solve the problem and the final expression of the voltage gain small signal voltage gain is this one right over here okay so this is how we can simplify so let me uh, just briefly remind you about this output transconductance so when you have like idvd characteristics of the transistor id versus vds you get the rise of your drain current and at certain point your current saturates actually and in ideal characteristics in the saturation region which is the region right to this dotted line this is your saturation region this is your triode region or linear region of the MOSFET so when your transistor is saturated where at this point which is called as uh, VDS sat actually which has which is greater than VGS minus VTH uh, this value is for a given value of VGS okay uh, so when your transistor saturates, you have you expect to have a constant current actually when there is an increment of VDS. However, in a practical transistor, especially in a short channel transistor, you have a slight rise in the drain current with respect to VDS. And that effect is called as channel length modulation, giving rise to the uh, small uh, to the output transconductance so this is the slope of this line is the output transconductance which is defined as gds which is uh, given as change in your id divided by change in vds okay so that's 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 how you compute actually so change in id is like this you can take just take the slope of this line so here is your change in id and then here is your change in vds so that's how you take a slope and gds so obviously if you say gds is equal to zero then rds is infinite and that's it okay so uh what about the small signal uh, transconductance gm1 and gm2 which it is given by this characteristics id versus vgs and then you have this kind of behavior and then the slope of this again the change in id divided by change in vgs is basically your gm so this is delta id divided by delta vgs that's the small signal transconductance so this is an input characteristics of your transistor and this is an output characteristics of a transistor so hope you found this video useful if you like the video click the like button hit the subscribe button share this video with others for a wider reach and till then wish you happy learning stay tuned